speaking of which, let me grab a call. We got a call about that very thing. And it is Frank in South Lyon, Michigan. Welcome to the EIB Network, Frank. Hi. Hi, Russ. How are you doing? Very well, sir. Thank you. Hey, yeah, the reason I was calling was in the first debate, I mean, Trump almost had a uh, uh, Jack Nicholson and a few good men moment where he almost admitted to a crime. He said, I gave money to them, and they do what I tell them to do. And before he said, you know, they gave him building permits or something, he said, I invited her to my wedding, and she came. But I just don't know why people aren't in investigating for crimes of bribery or at the very least looking at him as a lobbyist. Wait, wait, wait. Investigating who? Trump, because he's bribing officials to get what he wants. I mean, <laughs> well, people that are getting not, bribed as well. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> if, that's, a, if that's bribery, then every K Street firm is going to be in jail by Monday. That's that's not bribery, but that's one of the things that people are very frustrated by, that money, the donor class, is running the show. I mean, it's clearly why the Republican Party is content to sit by and let the Democrats get their amnesty and comprehensive immigration reform. Look, see, this is another thing. The people are not stupid. They're not mind-numb robots. The people who think immigration is the beginning and end of stopping the destruction of this country. They know full well that it's not an issue of compassion. The Democrat Party not trying to help the downtrodden. They know full well it's not about helping people overcome horrible obstacles. It's not about extending the American dream. It's about registering voters. The people of this country who oppose illegal immigration are not nativists, as they've been called. They are not bigots. They're not prejudiced against foreigners. They know what's going on here. They know that the Democrat Party wants this endless stream of unskilled, uneducated people to become registered as Democrats who will then become the permanent underclass. That will always vote Democrat because other than that, they won't have a way to live. Now, who in their right mind would support that? That's the primary form of opposition to this. And they don't see the Republican Party making a serious effort to stop it. Quite the opposite. It's a matter of survival to them. But the donor class, they want that low-skilled uneducated, never-ending flow of people because they'll work for less. And the donors have become more important than the voters to many in the Republican Party. So if you, masses of people who vote, want something, the power of your vote, collectively expressed, has now been dwarfed by the amount of money given by donors. And if the donors want the Republican Party to stand aside or maybe even join with the Democrats on comprehensive immigration reform, then reform, then that's what elected Republicans are going to do. And it's, um, look, money's always been dominant factor in politics. But I don't recall, and look, I could be dead wrong about this because I've, only been alive as an adult paying attention to this stuff 50 years or so. But I have never seen, I can't recall a period of time, speaking now of the Republican Party, where the expression of public opinion, majority public opinion, doesn't mean anything. I remember after the 2002 midterms, that was the year of the Wellstone Memorial. The Democrats had it in their heads that they were going to smoke the Republicans because by that time they thought they had really amplified the hatred for George W. Bush coming off the Florida recount. The 9-11 happened. And they're out there and they just despise Bush. We got the beginnings here of the debate on the Iraq war. The Democrats wanted it both ways on that. So they have this, the Paul Wellstone died in a plane crash. They had a memorial for him in Minnesota. 
And a bunch of Republican colleagues, senators, went to it, and they got booed out of the place. And they turned that memorial, essentially a funeral service, if you will, for Paul Wellstone, into one of the most despicable, pathetic displays of pathetic political selfishness on the part of the Democrat Party anybody's ever seen. Well, here came the midterms later in November, and guess what? That's a year, an off year. The opposing party, in this case Democrats, is supposed to just score huge, and the Democrats lost. The Republicans added seats in the House of Representatives. And I was doing election analysis coverage on NBC with Tom Brokaw and Russert. Brokaw could not believe what was happening. After those midterms, the Democrat losers, for two weeks afterwards, went to the microphones and went on television and said, you know what? We failed in listening to the American people, and we're going to fix that. We're going to start listening to the American people. Uh, th there was another big issue in that midterm was value. Value voters came out of nowhere, according to exit polls. So the Democrats started talking about how, you know what, we're going to have to pay a little bit more attention to the, uh, the values questions. In other words, they were acknowledging the will of the voters. That doesn't happen anymore. The will of the voters matters only if you win, but it's the donors to whom elected officials have become loyal in terms of policy implementation and execution. Whether anybody wants to admit it or not, there's a guy in this race not taking that kind of money. I'm here to tell you people are aware. They're not dunces. They're not uninformed on this kind of stuff. They see it. So there are explanations for this. 